There's a universe inside each of us. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garten, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. Welcome to the one within all back to the inner verse. I'm your host Chance and this recording is coming your way from the 29th of March 2020. It is clearly a time of critical convergences in our world with long running patterns of the planetary human condition colliding headlong into the new and unknown game changing shakeups we see all around us. Of course, most of the planet is on a pseudo martial law lockdown and our ability to connect with each other physically is being restricted in ways most of us have never experienced before. And by observing the space weather we're going through and looking at the lens of astrology, we can see that all this seems to be in the cards. It's not going to disappear overnight. January 12th, Saturn Pluto conjunction in Capricorn seemed to herald the onset of the planetary panic, just as in the past when Pluto and Saturn are together in an Earth sign. Big shakeups and transformations seem to be certain. Couple that with March's full moon opposite the sun that was conjunct with Neptune in Pisces, and you have an explanatory marker for why everyone seems to be so confused on the coronavirus details and feeling an amplified level of anxiety. In the meantime, we've had the chaotic energy of Uranus continuing its transit through Taurus, which seems to be reflected in the melting down of financial and industrial sectors of society. And there's plenty more that you could see in the star charts if you're inclined to search. But today we're going to be looking at a slightly different kind of cosmic clock in order to get a better bearing on where this crazy spaceship Earth is steering us next. Joining us for her second visit to the Innerverse is the harmonic heroine herself, the white wizard of waking us up to the ancient wisdom within ourselves, the highly exceptional Heather Elizabeth. As a teacher of the transformational map of synchronicity known as the 13 Moon Dream Spell, aka the Galactic Mayan Calendar, Heather Elizabeth has been facilitating foundational shifts for her fellow seekers since 2015, when after a life-changing expedition to Mexico to study ancient wisdom, she found her calling to begin the online Shine Wizard Academy. An acronym for Supporting Humanity in Navigating Evolution, Shine is the digital playground and classroom where Heather guides us in finding the courage and self-awareness to help people change themselves, engage with their evolutionary process, and get out of damaging patterns of self-nullifying repetition and into the slipstream of synchro mystical novelty. You can find Heather's offerings at shineheatherelizabeth.one, which I will link in the show notes for you all. And while you're there, you can click on the link to patreon.com forward slash interverse, where it's easy to sign up and support this here podcast by becoming a plus member. Five bucks a month is all it takes to help me help you. And by showing that small token of support, you'll get access to the extended two-hour version of this episode and the archive of about 100 extended shows going back to the beginning. A big thanks to all our current and past members for the assistance you've been giving me on this podcasting journey. And a thank you to everyone listening. You have my extreme gratitude for showing up to find your deepest and truest self by exploring the infinite with me throughout this show. And if you guys are also feeling thankful and want to be generous with a moment of your time, find Heather online through social media, Facebook or Instagram, and let her know you're glad she came on the show today to share her beautiful and empowering vibes with us. Now let's take a moment to dial in our breath, tune into our hearts, find that still small and quiet place deep inside and get settled in to take this amazing present moment and carry it forward into the limitless. With the championess for unity consciousness and Shiro of the harmonic convergence, the white magnetic wizard, Heather Elizabeth. Thanks for being here, Heather, and welcome back to the Innerverse. Wow, Chance. (laughs) Thank you so much for inviting me back. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and tapping in and being open to the beautiful inner verse that is you and your amazing consciousness and chance like you are a wizard yourself <laughs> you the way that you play with words and your your inner hardest is so beautiful i thank you i receive wholeheartedly what you just reflected um it's so beautiful thank wonderful, you wonderful <laughs> wonderful 
Yeah, we're both feeling pretty excited to be talking to each other, kind of maybe against the grain for the the mood, the general mood the world is in right now. I was wondering if there's anything you wanted to open up with to talk to us about before I move on to some of my more specific lines of inquiry. Wow. There's so much to share. What feels important in this now moment is to remind all of us that at the core of who we are, we are love and what surrounds us is love and what is unfolding in our collective experience right now is an opportunity for us to embody the love that we are in ways that perhaps we never have in human form, in physical form. And in order to embody that love, we need to take a clear look at everything that is in um, duality of that love, everything that is vibrating in a lower frequency than that, that love frequency. And that is not an easy task. It is a profound and difficult initiation for all of us hero sheroes. Yet we are up for the task or we wouldn't be here right now. So that that's my opening <laughs> offering and, and thought that's on my heart. Yeah, we're ready. Whatever comes along, we're always ready. We kind of planned it this way, even if it's on a level that we're no longer consciously aware of all the time. And whether it's an earthquake or an epidemic, catastrophe always brings out the good in the good people. It brings out the the love, the desire to actually care for one another, the desire to do the right thing, be there for each other. It's actually, it's actually like our human right to have uh, opportunities to share and help each other heal and make the best out of even difficult times. I mean, the difficult times are there so that we can realize how good we are and how good life is. Absolutely. Yes. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Let's warm them up with a bit of a refresher on the 13 moon calendar. And before, because that's going to be a big topic of a lot of the things we discuss. Where does it come from? Kind of how is it structured? And how can people begin to get a grip on deciphering it for themselves? Okay, wonderful. So the 13 moon dream spell is a evolutionary tool. And I often say an ascension tool. So on a side note, what we're in the midst of in this now moment is a profound wave of ascension. Um, so this is one of many tools that has been gifted to humanity to support us in aligning with the potential that we hold to evolve our consciousness, to ascend from the lower frequency experiences um, that we have been co-creating for eons of time. And this particular ascension tool that is the 13 moon dream spell was brought through by a visionary, hardest author, teacher by the name of Jose Arguelles. And Jose brought this tool through, honestly, in linear time, not that long ago. He brought it through around 1990. And it was actually based on his life's mission that he became aware of at age 14. He received a, a vision that he was to be this channel for bringing through this ancient wisdom that initially was seated on the planet thousands and thousands of years ago by the Maya people in what some esoteric metaphysical circles consider to be galactic Maya. So um, not originally from this planet. They brought through this very complex system of mathematics, of astronomy, of astrology that is absolutely interconnected with what's considered to be natural time. So the synchronic order of the universe. So the cycles and the patterns that all of nature and the cosmos adhere to, including, of course, ourselves. So the 13 moon dream spell is considered to be a map of synchronicity that is based on this ancient wisdom. And those of us that choose to follow 
the dream spell are aligning our minds with the mind of nature. And so we are experiencing harmony, synchronicity on an ongoing basis and, and able to really experience life and what is unfolding in life from a place of trust and surrender. And the word harmony keeps coming to my heart and being in harmony, being in the flow of life. And within this 13 moon dream spell system is an experience of the living myth that we are and that we are co-creating together. And we experience that through archetypes. And there are actually 260 different archetypes, which could be translated to aspects of our human potential. And every single day within the calendar we are tuning in and tapping into one of those 260 archetypes, which are also called galactic signatures. And those archetypes, galactic signatures, can be experienced as a portal or a window into the order of the universe, into the synchronicity, into the potential and the possibility that is surrounding us. And so we align our minds and our consciousness with this potential. And we begin to, I often say it's like taking off the blinders, seeing through the veil, experiencing the the colorful, diverse, magical universe that we truly live in. That's a great summary. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. uh, It's kind of like a different form of astrology. What was coming to my mind right now? is the fact that we've been talking a lot about Taoism and that particular way of articulating the flow of nature and getting in harmony with nature. And the Taoist perspective is really more integrating with just like the natural world to find that harmony and just going with the flow. But in today's world, we have so many seeming choices about what to do or who we could be. You know, we're pretty disconnected from nature. We we don't live like outside, <laughs> very many of us. And so the Mayan calendar, to me, it's almost like what Terrence McKenna was trying to do when he attempted to map the I Ching into a calendar of synchronicity. And interestingly enough, I was listening to someone talking about the Mayan calendar in conjunction with the Gregorian calendar or the Julian calendar, whatever one we're on right now. And I guess... At the time when that change was made, the uh, year that it would have been got changed as well. And I'm sorry for not having a source to like show you show you guys to back up what I'm saying. Maybe look it up. Tell me if I'm totally getting this wrong. But the idea was that this year is actually 2012 in the original counting of the years and not. (laughs) And so like the big 2012 shift that was seen in the Mayan calendar could possibly have been more pointing to this time than any other. Not that 2012 was an inconsequential year. I mean, for me, that was like a big, I was a really different person between 2012 and 2013. It's pretty impossible to describe. I won't try, but (laughs) let's talk a little bit more about the way that this system can give you almost like the code. It's called the code spell that will show you a reflection of your strengths and your passions so that you can find a better, you you can know what you're looking for in terms of what you're going to harmonize with behaviorally, vocationally, in relationship to others, you know? How how can someone listening quickly and easily find their tribe and code spell so they can be thinking about it during this talk? Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So the quickest way I would invite us all is through the Law of Time website, which is Jose Arguelas' foundation, lawoftime.org. And then you can do um, slash decode, and that will take you right to the decoder. And you type in your birthday, and it will pull up your galactic signature, and you'll see your actual, I often say your hieroglyph. So it's a picture of your tribe. And then there will be a series of lines and dots. And there are 13 different ways that those are configured. And that will be above the picture. And that's what's called your tone, T-O-N-E. And then there's, like Chance said, there's your code spell. 
Another way to define that is your invocation, your prayer, your mantra that is specific to your particular archetype or galactic signature. And so chance is bringing through not only every day are we connecting with the different galactic signatures, and those are those windows into experiencing synchronicity, the synchronic order of the universe. We each have our own personal galactic signatures. The Maya said that is your face before you had a face. So these are part of our soul blueprint, our energetic signatures, and based on the day that you chose to be incarnated on the planet. And this whole, this is a map of synchronicity. Everything within it is precise, profound, and purposeful. So there are no accidents. And you may have an immediate recognition when you connect with your galactic signature. And it's like, oh my God, this, this feels so resonant to me. And, and, or you may be like WTF, what is this? <laughs> Cause it is a totally different language than we've been conditioned in this timeline to translate. So the more you connect with that code spell or that invocation and mantra it in itself is like a window. It's a, a doorway. It's it's an opening into you remembering this part of who you truly are. So it's an activation every time you connect with it. And even though the those are English words, you know, that we're used to, most of them we're used to seeing, the way that they are configured is very different. And so you'll immediately most likely, and everyone tuning into this most likely will immediately feel on that energetic level, the vibrations of it and, and how it is really activating you into a profound rememberment of who you are. Yeah. And if you already feel like you know who you are, then it's going to just be like, wow, this affirms what I already thought. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Mine, I remember being pretty tripped out about mine being white magnetic mirror because it's all about like absorbing creative energy towards myself and then reflecting it back outwards. And like that couldn't define a podcast host that was focused on imagination and creativity like I am much better than it does. (laughs) It's pretty weird. But uh, in your video from 322, which was my birthday, I might add, you talked about how <laughs> Yay, yeah. happy birthday chance. Thank you. And you know what else I need to say real quick? Happy anniversary to us because we connected in this timeline in this lifetime a year ago. Yeah. Cause I remember it was right around your 30th birthday that we connected and set up this, you know, our original podcast, which was, I believe early April is when we did the last one, early April of 2019. Yeah, which wasn't really planned, but here we are kind of riding that cycle again. Exactly. I think you're right. I'm looking up on my website right now to see when I published the episode with you. And yeah, it was April 12th. So not very far off at all. Yeah, that was a really fun episode, guys. I recommend going and checking it out. And I just added a search bar to the homepage of the website. So if you want to just type in Heather there, you'll find it really quickly. But yeah, on 322, you did release this. That's your B-Day. Yeah, you released a video talking about how we're reaching a climactic point in our collective evolution right now. And I've heard people, especially last year for a long time, talking about this coming year. 2020 as a cardinal shift. It's sort of like a metaphor for going from one season to the next on a bigger scale than just the scale of the year. Another way of looking at it would be if the clock was divided into quadrants, like there are four seasons, we're moving from one quadrant to another one. A big, big shift. Does the 13 moon calendar support that idea? It absolutely does, Chance. Within the galactic calendar, we celebrate the new year on July 26th, which is also, I'm sure many of us are aware, that's the opening of the Lion's Gate. So that time of year has been heralded as a time of rebirth and new beginnings. 
for eons of time, our ancestors knew this. And a huge cosmic aspect of that is because that is when our great central sun rises with the Sirius star system. And the Syrians have been allies for humanity for eons of time. And humanity has looked to that star system and other ones for a navigation tool um, to be able to move through our human journey with greater ease and alignment with, with spirit, with all that is. So July 26th is the Galactic New Year. And this past July 26th, 2019, we began a whole new 13-year cycle. So as you would imagine, and I know we spoke to this last time we gathered, the vibration of 13 is very significant, period, and very significant within this system. This is the 13 moon dream spell. So that cycle of 13 is in alignment with the feminine, divine feminine cycles of creation. So whenever we're moving through a whole cycle of 13, that is completing a pattern of creation within natural time. So last year, galactic year, we were completing a 13 year cycle that began in 2006. And I feel like we talked, I'm sure we spoke about this in our last time we got together chance. So July 26th, 2019, we began a whole new 13 year cycle that we're still in this first year of. And the first vibration within the pattern of creation of 13 is magnetic. So is chance. Chance holds that magnetic tone of purpose about unifying our purpose, both within ourselves coming into alignment and unification within ourselves and then within our collective experience. So that's what we're in the midst of right now. We began the cycle July 26, 2019. So all of us that have been in tune with this part of our cosmic evolution, we, we know this is big stuff. We're like, okay, we're starting a new 13 year cycle. Like this is, you know, all about rebirth and regeneration, unifying. And this cycle that is kicking us off, the archetype, the galactic signature is white magnetic wizard. So we are actually beginning a 13 year cycle that has the energy, the archetypal imprint of the wizard within it, flowing within it. And there are so many ways to interpret that. And I invite us all to be curious about how that wizard archetype is showing up for each of us personally and then in the collective. When we look at archetypes, we look at the spectrum. So there's the empowered, aligned aspect of the archetype. There's the shadowy aspect of the archetype and everything in between. And we just naturally, we as human beings, we experience the spectrum of everything, whether we're aware of it or not. So at its, I would say, most empowered aspect of the white wizard, the white wizard is the shaman. It's got jaguar medicine. It is the the seer. It is able to walk between the worlds with ease and grace and in alignment. And in the dream spell, the wizard holds the energy of receptivity, being open to receive messages from source, from nature, from our guides and allies, both seen and unseen. It holds the medicine of timelessness. So this is huge for what's showing up right now, I feel like, because timelessness, being in the present moment that that is where reality really is, is the present moment. And human beings, especially our culture, we've been so trapped in the past or obsessing and worrying and catastrophizing about the future. As a collective family, we've really lost the power and the beauty of presence, being in full presence. 
And many of us that have been on the awakening path, like we've been remembering and we've been activating ourselves into all these different tools to be present. Yet we know the collective family is still already caught in the past and or the future. So the wizard invites us into timelessness, the power of timelessness and the cyclical nature of time. So we're really, yeah, so we're really being initiated into that in a, you know, (laughs) I have some pretty funny guides, like hardcore, like it's freaking hardcore right now. Like this, this initiatory passage of, you know, you, we've got to move into that space of being present and being in the flow and being in alignment with who we truly are way beyond the confines of what we've been conditioned to believe we are. So that was a very long, (laughs) then that's just one honestly aspect of what's showing up in the calendar right now um, in terms of this, this phenomenal time of evolution. Um, But we literally not only began a new decade, 2020, which I love the play that many of us have been playing with that. It's like 2020 vision. Like what does 2020 vision look like and feel like? How do we, how can we experience that um, now? So not only that, we've got this new 13 year cycle that we are birthing together at this very moment. Yeah. And alongside of it, there's also the sort of subconscious programming that people have associated with the twenties from the previous century that we're almost like having to, I would say not work against, but work through, work through because some people have definitely got that, that pattern in their heads without even maybe being aware of it. And we're seeing, and we'll probably talk about it, but we're seeing a version of that pattern seeming like it might be coming on. I mean, the current economy situation is a lot more than a recession at the moment, for sure. And there's definitely reasons for that. But I wanted to talk about the wizard thing just a little bit because I didn't really make this connection. But last year after, I mean, after July, the second half of 2019, I got so re-obsessed with the Lord of the Rings and Gandalf, the character of Gandalf, He represents all the stuff that you were just talking about with the wizard perfectly. It is like Tolkien had a direct access connection to the universal archetypes and was perfect with it because first of all, receptivity, he's open to finding, he's open to anybody bringing what they can bring to the table to help. You know, he, even the smallest and seemingly weakest or most, most timid, the hobbits, he has faith in them that they can move mountains and they save the day multiple times. And timelessness, he's actually not a human being in the same way as other, or he's not a human being technically in Tolkien's mythology. He is an immortal. He's timeless. But the present moment is really where he operates. He's like always using every moment that he has perfectly wise in, in how he plays out every card he's got. He, he's like moving from group to group and like putting everything piece into place that he can without wasting a second it's he's really an amazing character you can learn a lot from the character of Gandalf for sure I just had to point that out and I didn't really make the connection that I was getting so obsessed with Gandalf during the white magnetic wizard year (laughs) yeah that's that's awesome I love that you were channeling that chance and reconnecting with that amazing archetype and beautiful being that is Gandalf you know, Gandalf, I feel is, he's obviously got the Merlin medicine, you know, I mean, he is the quintessential wizard. And that whole story is, I mean, it's just mind blowing to even begin to get how Tolkien was able to bring channel all that through. I mean, it's just amazing. And what it is the ultimate hero's journey as well. And that is absolutely what we are all on we are on the ultimate hero shero's journey right now of discovering what we're really made of what's cool about lord of the rings and i'll just say i've read it twice and watched the trilogy twice since we last spoke which is pretty hardcore wow. that is <laughs> yeah that is really hardcore awesome the second time around was because i was doing an episode about it which was so much fun but 
What's cool about Tolkien, just, I mean, this is kind of a tangent, but it's a good one, is that not only does the main character Frodo have a hero's journey that you can plot through the, the books, but like every character in the, in the books has a hero's journey, like plays out the hero's journey in their own way. It's like a bunch of hero's journeys in one story and not, it, it's so much more expanded than your typical fantasy story or you know, any kind of tale. It's just, it really reflects how it's not just one hero's journey. It's all of these interconnected hero's journeys that have to be synchronized and coordinated through what is in the books referred to as chance actually, but it's really just like the divine order of the cosmos or the intention of the creation itself that's coming through to put everybody in the right time at the right place to do the thing they got to do to make everything work. And I think that's how we should definitely look at our own hero's journey. Not that we're the one that's going to go out and slay the dragon, but that by doing the right thing, even in a small capacity, whether it's showing, you know, metaphorically speaking, showing mercy to Gollum and not slaying him, you just don't know how that's going to play out and affect the overall big picture in this war for reclaiming our birthright of infinite consciousness, limitless being. Aho. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what's the, what's the next marker on the code spells that we're going into after July? Well, of course, chance, because we are, we are in alignment with, with the synchronic order and the flow. Today is a massive marker that I would love to speak to. And in recognition that we're recording this and you will share it at the divine perfect time we know. And remember, we're in the timelessness. So everything is, is occurring at the same time. And so today, March 29th in the Gregorian calendar, in the 13 moon dream spell, today is solar moon day 23, Ken 260. Yellow cosmic sun. So, Ken 260 is the final Ken in the Zulkin, and the Zulkin is its own map of all of the 260 archetypes within the dream spell that form the collective hero shero's journey. So, 260 different signatures equals a nine moon cycle. And that nine moon cycle is symbolic of the human gestation cycle. So most of us have been, were in the womb on or around nine month, moons. So we are literally completing today a nine moon human gestation cycle. This gestation cycle began on July 13th 2019. So I invite everyone who's tapping in and tuning into this to create some space to be reflective on what all has unfolded in your journey since July 13th, 2019, in your personal hero, Shiro's journey. With the curiosity about what am I birthing within my own consciousness at this, at this time? And then we could write volumes already about what humanity's birthing right now. Yeah, we really could. <laughs> we could. I know we all have this awareness and I'm being called to, to speak it out loud that these cycles are ever changing. These cycles and patterns are ever changing. So Kin 260 shows up on the calendar on different times throughout the cycles. So Kin 260, yellow cosmic sun is not always on March 29th. And actually it hasn't been on March 29th for 52 years. Yeah, that's actually something we talked about a little bit last time, yes. how there's a 52 year, 52 year cycle. Cycle, yeah, which is really interesting because there's 52 weeks in the year. Yes. And 52 cards in the deck, you know, the... The minor arcana of the tarot is kind of yes. symbolic of this. Absolutely. 
I was thinking about that when we when I was getting ready for this show and I went back and did some research on things that happened 52 years ago. Because last year we talked about how 2019 was sort of like revisiting the energy of 1967. So that would mean this year is akin to 1968. And some important events that happened, according to history.com, I quote, the year 1968 remains one of the most tumultuous single years in history, marked by historic achievements, shocking assassinations, a much hated war, and a spirit of rebellion that swept through countries all over the world. Occurring at the dawn of the television age, the historic events of 1968 also played out on TV sets across the country, bringing things home in a way that had never been possible before. So some of the stuff that was going on, just to name Vietnam War, of course, was going on. It was not going well. In the United States, MLK and JFK were both killed in 68. Students all over the world were protesting, taking over buildings, sometimes getting violent or having violence acted upon them. But the most interesting parallel to me might be the TV thing, because the panic crisis we're watching happen right now is coming to people pretty much entirely through screens and very rarely through direct experience. Other than the experience of being trapped at home, looking at a screen. <laughs> so what do you think about the 1968 2020 symmetry? What do you think it might portend for the coming months? Well, I, I feel like a lot of the seeds that were planted in 1968 are blossoming now, coming to fruition. And when we move into this space of choosing love over fear, we choose to release the mind's need to judge or blame anything. And we simply, and chance as, as the Yogi Yogini white mirror, you really bring this medicine in of, you know, we can choose to be a witness to, to it as best we can from moment to moment and respond to life versus react. So without judgment about all of the seeds that were planted back then, yet being as mindful as we possibly can be on how we choose to work with the garden that is before us. <laughs> so I'm very grateful that you brought up Martin Luther King Jr. specifically and the 52 year anniversary of his assassination. And I believe maybe it was Robert Kennedy who was assassinated and does it say JFK there? Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It was Robert, not John F. Kennedy, because uh, JFK was 63. Right. But. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I was very aware of when that 52-year cycle came around. Well. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for catching no, that. No, it's, it's all good. So really bringing in an awareness of the medicine that these evolutionary leaders gifted to us at that that time and again with the timelessness i feel like i know that what i have been experiencing personally is that we have arrived at a time where we actually are beginning to really get what leaders like mlk junior you know, was teaching and JFK and Robert Kennedy and Maya Angelou. There's, there's so many leaders that are no longer in physical form, yet what they seeded the planet and the medicine that they offered to us, we are finally receiving, <laughs> you know, again, that receptivity piece. So as challenging and painful and heartbreaking what we're moving through right now is for so many of our brothers and sisters in humanity. It truly is a time for us to get the power and awe of our interconnectedness and interdependence with one another and all that is. This is a global, it's being called pandemic. I choose to call it a global initiation. Like it transcends any and all ways that we have, our human minds have tried to divide one another and make one person less than another. Like all of that is really being, the, the, the slate is being cleaned of that right now. 
And so we, we have this phenomenal opportunity to transmute vibrations of war, to transmute vibrations of inequality, to transmute vibrations of hate. I mean, all, all of the ways of being that must have served us, served our evolution because we needed to learn from it or I, I feel it wouldn't happen. Yet we've reached a, a moment where we really don't have to keep playing those tapes over and over and over again. Like we can truly transcend all of that and co-create a whole new reality on this planet. So the 60s um, that, that we have been revisiting, like you said, we're, we're in 1968 frequency right now. So we've been revisiting the 60s for the last you know, eight years, we can really take all of those experiences and, and what we potentially have learned as human beings and move into a whole new reality here together. In this now moment, we have reached the climactic <laughs> aspect of that. The potential that is before us is it's hard to put words to it. It's so incredible. I see what you're talking about. You know, the seventies were hard times for a lot of places, a lot of people in the United States, even. And because of some of the choices that we made, humanity made during the sixties in reaction more than response to the energies of that part of the, the cycle, I think that led to some of the, you know, more difficult things that then emerged in the following decade. And I'm hoping that we're going to make some different choices. But <laughs> to look at 68 a little more, just specifically the month of April, since we're about to go into April, we had the release of 2001, A Space Odyssey and Planet of the Apes. So very, very interesting uh, symbolically because 2001, A Space Odyssey, for example, has this big black monolith Thing that the proto humans are like worshiping and mystified by. And what do, what is everybody like worshiping in society right now? It's the black rectangle, the monolith, the phone or the tablet. It's really, really a weird prophetic parallel that Stanley Kubrick was making with that. And Planet of the Apes, it seems like people are not all people, but some people are so afraid of what's happening right now. They're afraid that things are going to devolve into a planet of the apes scenario <laughs> and, you know, statue of Liberty blown up and everything. <laughs> but in, in April four, four, that's actually the day that MLK was assassinated was on four, four, but that date has extra significance, a lot more oomph this year because Jupiter and Pluto are conjuncting on that day. And we have the numerology, numerology of four, four, 2020, which is another way of saying four, four, four. So, Watch out for that day, April 4th. Uh, make, you know, make some positive plans for that day, even if it's just get out in nature or I mean, it doesn't have to be anything grand, but really try to harness that. That's a gateway point for sure. The uh, 444 gateway. I mean, it's subjective to you. So I, I was saying this in a previous episode. Things aren't going to go back to the way that they were. They never can. They never will. And the choice is now on us to either make the time that we're entering you know, is, is life going to choose for us what time we're entering or are we going to create our own life going forward? You get, it's, it's one or the other. There's no in between. But the other thing in April of 68 was that East Germany instituted their socialist communist government that made life really bad for its people until 89 when the wall came down. So when I was talking about choices that were made in the 60s that led to hard times in the 70s, one of those times was war or one of those choices was war, like continuing to stay in Vietnam made things really hard. Uh, places that did institute communism and extreme forms of socialism, bad times came out of that. And it looks like there is a pull in the United States and elsewhere to go in that direction, go towards real extreme conformity, extreme centralized authority control over every little minute aspect of our lives. And I think we're going to have hard times if we don't make a different choice. And that might just be me pontificating a little bit, but I feel like 
that's one of the crucial aspects of, of this right now. And the way to make sure that those hard times, if they come for some of the planet, don't affect us as much is to find our, <laughs> to go back to Lord of the Rings. And I heard, uh, I heard Gordon White, the podcaster who does Rune Soup, say this, and I, I got to repeat it because it's perfect. He said, now's the time to find your helms deep. <laughs> find your helms deep, a place where even without a single dollar, you could survive. You know, find the tribe. You know, you you probably know somebody that's got some land or a farm or you might even. you Even if it's not something that's going to happen, great idea to start talking to people in your circle, in your tribe like, what would we do if everything completely collapsed and fell apart? Where would we go? Who, how would we take care of ourselves? Just having that conversation, it's a relief, actually. It seems like a scary conversation to have, but it's a relief because it's a lot better to have thought at least some of this through before the, the case that it happens rather than after. I'm not saying everything's going to collapse, but of course I don't know. So yeah, find your helms deep. I feel like that's great advice. <laughs> it is. It is. And in a sense, everything is collapsing because it, it's time for it to. And I say that in, with deep respect and reverence for every single human being's experience of what's happening right now, because we're all having our own unique personal journeys, heroes, sheroes journey in the midst of the collective journey. And there's not a right or wrong. It's, it is what it is. So this is another piece around all of this that I feel like, you know, back to the, the cycle of the wizard that is upon us from the dream spell perspective is now is the time that we are being shown that we, in order to truly move into a potential of thriving as human beings, which is possible, believe it or not, it is. Um, we must create a powerful, solid spiritual foundation. You know, the, the wand and the tarot. We must have that foundation because everything else is always going to be changing and shifting. Always. Now, we're in a massive experience of that right now because of where we are in our evolution. But that's just that whole law of impermanence. You know, that it, that is just the nature of nature. <laughs> it's always going to be shifting. So where where do you find your solid ground and your foundation? Yeah, the scariest, but also the most relieving sentence you can say that's true is this too shall pass. Yes, exactly. And it's interesting that actually that that exact phrase chance came back into my conscious awareness just a few weeks before all this got going through a meditation program that I was participating in. So yes, absolutely. So where do you, where do you tether yourself? You know, where do you find that, that trust and that surrender to the flow? And that's, we all get to find what that is for us. We know you're talking about tethering, like what do we tether to whenever the fact is that everything changes and this too shall pass. It's the self. That's the one thing that you can tether to. That's what it means to have your solid spiritual foundation is that if you've made the agreement with yourself that you can trust yourself and you do trust yourself to do the right thing, even in the face of the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen, that's what it means to respond and not to react. And that's the only solid ground that's what it is to be grounded <laughs> is to know that, well, no matter what, there's a reliable person there because I'm going to be there. And there you, that's all you get. You don't get something more solid than that. That's your ship. Yes. I always say that S with the self with a capital S. Beautiful. The reality is there are so many of us that don't have that at the moment. And it's an opportunity or they don't realize they have it is a better way to communicate that yet again the opportunity to remember that is so powerful right now while we're still in the free hour do you want to spend some time talking about how you've been able to work with people over the last year and what your experience is in your online coursework right now and 
you know, talk a little bit about what you can do for listeners that want to connect with you before we move into the second hour and start the heavy duty esoterica, as I'm sure it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, Chance. So I'll I'll preface this that like we're all experiencing experiencing right now, I'm in a massive shift myself. So there are a lot of unknowns with how my offerings are going to manifest as we move forward. I could say in this now moment, I'm being strongly guided to hold virtual circles on a regular basis. I've been doing that for a while now. So I would say it's being amped up and these are all through through Zoom and they are free. If people are guided to donate, they're welcome to, but they're free to everybody. And so I'm having them on the new moons and the full moons. I'm having them in accordance with some very significant cycles within the galactic calendar. So that's a way to directly connect with me at this now moment. I have the info on my event page on my website and always posting on on social media as well. And then fortunately, I have already been set up doing one-on-one with people virtually for a while as well. So that hasn't shifted a whole lot. And I offer the galactic archetype activations for people who feel guided to that. I offer energy medicine ceremonies virtually. That That is really something that's come to the forefront over these last few weeks that feels really important service to be offering. And we opened up the, the portal of the Wizard Academy officially at the beginning of this 13-year cycle. and that is shifting rapidly as well. (laughs) So I know there's something that's evolving with that that's coming through me as well. So I would just say, stay tuned, stay connected. I have email newsletter tribe that I'm really blessed to have. And I send updates through that and, and channeled messages through that. And also want to plant the seed that The end of this galactic year, a dear soul sister of mine and I have an intention to have a pilgrimage retreat to Taos, New Mexico. So we had already started seeding that before everything got going big time over these last few weeks. And we're holding that intention. So if this speaks to your heart, I invite you to hold that intention to be with us. So The retreat begins July 21st and will go through the new year, Galactic New Year, July 26th in Taos. And it's going to be phenomenal, absolutely amazing what's coming through for that. So I'm confident by that time we will all get to give each other massive hugs and be in each other's physical presence. So would love to have anyone who feels inspired to join us to set that intention to be there. The call to adventure. That's a big step on the hero's journey. You hear guys, Heather's giving you the call to adventure. <laughs> this has been, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun just like last yes. time. I remember we laughed a lot last time too. <laughs> yes. And laughter is such beautiful, powerful medicine, especially in this now moment. So I'm grateful that we can, Laugh together, Chance. Yeah, as am I, as am I. And the only thing that's not funny is that we're reaching the end of our two hours together right about now. And uh, there's there's no rush to get this over and done with for me, but I wanted to make sure that you have the chance to take the floor and you know wrap up any loose ends that you think might still be on the table or any anything that you had hoped to express coming into this that maybe we didn't get to and you know just uh, take it away heather <laughs> thank you chance well there are a couple of things i definitely feel guided to reflect to us around our t- the timing we're in so we know today we're completing the nine moon gestation cycle, which is called a galactic spin. So a a journey through all of the 260 archetypes. And coming up on actually Easter Sunday, 
interestingly enough, which is Sunday, April 12th in the Gregorian calendar, is in the dream spell calendar, what is considered to be the return of the galactic year, which is white magnetic wizard. So essentially what that means is on Easter Sunday, we are completing 260 days of this galactic year, which if you remember, we talked about earlier, is the beginning of a new 13-year cycle. So on Easter Sunday, we are birthing the first phase of this this new 13-year cycle. And that doesn't always line up with Easter Sunday, first and foremost. And the fact that it's happening again in convergence with what we're navigating as a collective family of humanity is, is profound. So I have a feeling this will be released by then, Chance, possibly. So just please be ever mindful of the power of that moment and and what it means. And know that I will be offering a, a virtual circle on that day. And I'm I'm working with some other galactic family members and coming together to offer something for all of us to to really be aligning and tuning into the power of of that cycle that's converging at that time. So just being mindful of that. And I would love to share a poem, some some heart with you all from the Mayan Oracle that I referenced earlier. I call it my Mayan Bible. It's it's so badass. So please check it out if it if you're curious. And part of what's in this beautiful work of art are poems for each of the tribes of the 20 tribes. So Chance has shared he's he's the white mirror tribe, the Yogi Yogini. I'm a white wizard, the wizards. And so there's there are these immaculate poems that were created for each of the tribes. So what I would like to share is the poem of the wizard, since that's the 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 year that we're in and the 13 year cycle that we're in together. And so the Mayan word for wizard is ish. And ish is actually that that jaguar medicine that I referenced earlier. So this is called the magical child Ish. I am Ish. From what realm does my magicianship emerge? My being is like a radiant bouquet of cosmic mysteries, each bud fully blossomed to emit such enticing scent as could only arise from the garden of God goddess. Wisdom is the fruit of my integrity. For well, I know what true magic is. Pure, clear, fresh, the vast mind field into which I hone the totality of my beingness as a focused shaft of light around which all else dances. With the tender touch of my wand, feel your natural alignment with divine will. Sense its charged potential. My wand is potent, benevolent, gentle, yet like a bolt of lightning, its power moves through time and space with devoted ease. My action manifests from the blazing light of truth's inner sun. I stand in innocent correspondence with the original condition of the light. The wisdom wand with crystal cords, the voice of heart knowing. May you become as I, the wise fool, a transparent window through which the divine illuminates. Resplendent mysteries do I carry in my magical dream coat. I am the shaman priest, the geomancer, the mystic builder and adapter of materials, the chameleon shapeshifter. Effortlessly do I slip between worlds with the graceful power of a jaguar beyond the four winds of many universes. The all-seeing eye reveals my connection with the mysteries of ceremonial initiation. 
Through the eye connecting the dimensions, I have learned, as you can, to spread my galactic dream coat into a spirit sail that traverses the galaxies of times past, present, and future to retrieve the many gifts empowering your present expression. But now I will reveal to you my most precious magical offering, the innocence, wisdom, and clarity embodied in the transparency of the magical child. Aho. Wow, wow, wow. (laughs) That's some powerful poetry for sure. Yes. It's really interesting, too, that the word is ish. It just connects back to Tolkien for me, because Tolkien, who was definitely like the consummate wizard and the creator of one of my particular wizard guides, or not the creator, more just the channel for it, right? So he had a thing called the Book of Ishness that was a collection of writings and mostly visionary paintings that had very deep esoteric meaning and symbology If you look at them, really, really interesting. I recommend anyone Google the book of Ishness. And the reason why it made me think of a connection is because it's spelled I-S-H, which is kind of like, you know, when something is ish, it's like that. It's an isness in a way. But also the letter I with the, the line with the dot above it was in the ancient tongues. It was actually the E. It was it would have been Ishness if you were pronouncing it the way that ancestors would have read it. So I was like, ishness, ish, like Tolkien was creating a book of wizardness in a way. And his his wizard character, Gandalf, is said to be the wielder of the secret fire, which was another way of talking about the original light of creation, the creator being whose mind represented the column of light, the shaft of light that all other shadows of selves dance around <laughs> the you know, the great wheel, if you will, the entirety of. So, yeah, that, that poem definitely connected really strongly to me with my uh, my wizard guide, Gandalf, and <laughs> my imagination guide, Tolkien, because, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot you could address in, in the lines of that poem. And I can't wait to listen to it again whenever I'm going through editing and Although I've got a million books that I'm reading right now, I guess I'm going to have to pick up that book too. (laughs) Then we can talk about that next time that we chat. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And it feels really important for you to decode decode Tolkien if you haven't yet and see what his galactic signature is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you have a second? I'll just look it up. Yes, yeah. Okay. Can you pull up a, a dream spell calculator and I'll tell you his date of birth? Yes. Cause he's, de- he's definitely asking us to, so. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. He's January 3rd, 1892. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He just had his galactic birthday. Really? So he is a blue galactic Eagle. Ken 255. So he is the, the seer in the dream spell, the visionary. Makes a lot of sense. And, you know, in his stories and the moment that everything seems to be lost and everything's falling apart, the Eagles come in and save the day. Yes, it happens exactly. in multiple You're instances. right. You're right. And Gandalf works very consciously with, with he, the He's Eagles. the reason the Eagles show up is because yes. he's got a relationship yes. with them. Yeah. I will tell you, he was born in the year of the white electric wizard. So that's the year he was incarnated was a wizard year. Yeah, and that seems like that's definitely relevant. Yeah, so he just, just a few days ago, had his, well, the new moon. On the Aries new moon was his galactic birthday. It was Blue Galactic Eagle. That's very cool. I'm glad we got to take a little detour and decode Tolkien a bit. Yeah, keep looking into that. Yeah, because he's definitely, you are working very intimately with him. I can, I get that. Yeah, and you ought to check out the recent episode I did with Dr. Becca Tarnas about Tolkien and she's an archetypal astrologer and she's written a book kind of with a Jungian bent on interpreting the Lord of the Rings story through an archetypal lens. And her book is awesome. I would get that too. If it was, if I was you, it's like going through beat by beat chapter by chapter, the story and pulling out some of the things that you might not have observed about it or 
filling in the context because he created an entire millennia long history of the world that isn't even in the books. It's just referenced here and there. Definitely the wow. visionary. Yes. <laughs> yes. If there's anybody that examining their life can show you that the imagination is a portal, it's a perceptual portal, not something that's just coming out of nowhere that doesn't exist. It, it's really Tolkien. He can show you that the imagination is a real thing because that, that realm he creates has uh, got the consistency of reality to it. It feels like it. So, yeah, I guess we got to wrap this up, though. <laughs> Heather, remind people where they can find you and make sure that you keep in mind how grateful I am that you exist and that we get to be friends and talk. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your wonderful lightheartedness with us today. It's been a blast. It definitely didn't feel like two hours. And no, the time was this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, Chance, you are such a dear galactic brother of mine, and I am so grateful that we get to play together in this lifetime. And thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's tuning in. We are family. I love you all. And I'm so grateful to be on this planet with you at this time. Shine Heather Elizabeth. One. Elizabeth one. please reach out. Facebook groups. Yeah, face. I got Facebook groups, Conscious Dreamers, uh, Magic of Manifestation, Moon Tribe on Facebook, Instagram, reach out, email me, shineheatherelizabeth at gmail. And definitely, if you're called, keep your antenna up around these virtual circles I'm having right now too. You're always welcome to participate in those as well. So... Very, very awesome. Yes. All right. Well, we'll hang it up. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Heather. Aho and in la cash, which means I am another yourself. It's kind of like the Mayan version of Namaste. And I like that one. I love when I hear people say that. And I'm really glad we got to do this round two with Heather Elizabeth. I think that if you guys are curious about the galactic Mayan 13 moon calendar, you ought to go check out the first show I did with their last year. Like I mentioned, there's actually a search feature on the website now, so it should be easier to find than ever. Or you should just Google Heather Elizabeth Innerverse, and I'm sure it'll come up. It was really interesting to be recording that episode on March 29th, which was the Kin 260 Yellow Cosmic Sun. And today, as I'm recording this outro, it's actually April 4th which seems like a pretty powerful portal day to me. That would be like 4-4-2020, which is another way of saying 444 if you reduce 2020 down and get the four. So it's pretty cool when those numerical alignments happen and it happens to coincide with a Pluto-Jupiter conjunction that I've talked about a few times. I've been pretty excited about today. I have some plans to, uh, when I'm done with this production here, get into a more meditative state <laughs> and maybe do a synchronized meditation with a bunch of people who planned a worldwide meditation thingy, simultaneous meditation for global healing, global evolution, to try to use the power of our consciousness in that spooky quantum action way to influence the timeline we're on, maybe prevent us from going down a bad path. Because things are weird right now. We didn't talk about the worldwide lockdown quarantine situation too much in this one. And that's okay. I didn't really want to. But it definitely seems like in the galactic Mayan calendar, the 4-4 date has significance that aligns with that intention. Because today is kin number six, white rhythmic world bridger. And the activation code spell for that is I organize in order to equalize. Balancing opportunity, I seal the store of death with the rhythmic tone of equality. I am guided by my own power doubled. I always like that I am guided by my own power doubled thing that's in my personal code spell as well. And I do think that the questions of what's happening right now or where the world's going right now definitely have to do with people's fear of death. And with this idea, the tone of equality, <laughs> trying to do that correctly, it's never, it's never been easy. <laughs> I 
kind of makes one yearn for maybe simpler times. Although in recent decades and centuries, I guess times have never been that simple or easy. And we've had it pretty good. One thing I really like about the galactic synchronicity calendar that we've been talking about in this show is the 52-year cycle thing. And like I brought up, I did some research into what happened 52 years ago, which would have been 1968. And today is actually 4-4, the day that is the anniversary of MLK's death, which is a big equality tone thing for sure. This last eight years has definitely felt like revisiting the 60s, at least in some respects. I mean, I wasn't around back in the 60s, but there is this whole psychedelic revolution that's been going on for quite a few years now, which is very similar to the sort of hippie movement in some respects. Except now maybe we've got a better handle on (laughs) what we're getting ourselves into whenever we talk about these things or engage with these types of plant medicine tools. But I decided to go back 52 years again and check out what was going on in 1916, which was also a tumultuous year with war and rebellion pretty much all over the planet. And the World War I Battle of Verdun and the Battle of the Somme happened that year, which combined led to at least 2 million casualties for just those two battles. And Verdun was a nine-month-long battle. There's that nine-month thing, that human gestation period that Heather was talking about. And that was the longest fight of the war. (laughs) Definitely glad that we're not revisiting that type of energy and things have toned down a bit because if you know anything about World War I, it was basically like putting humanity through the wood chipper in mass. So yeah, lots to be grateful for. Even if times seem tough at the moment, it's not like things were. Also in 1916 was the Easter Rising Rebellion in Ireland, which kicked off decades of troubles and domestic violence there. There was revolts and rebellion in the Middle East against the Ottoman Empire. And I was reading about how China's central government basically collapsed in that time due to some violent warlords. So yeah, we're pretty lucky that all we're getting is stay home, wear a mask if you go out, which... Even though that's not nearly as bad, it's still starting to get to me, this whole destruction of basic freedoms thing. But going back further in those cycles, 52 years before 1916, that was 1864. The uh, Civil War was at its height at that time. And I'm sure there was probably like imperialistic or colonial wars going on too back then. Because the European powers were still heavily exploiting Africa and Asia, Asia during that period. And 52 years before that, the War of 1812, it was 1812, and you had Napoleon also out there in Europe doing his imperial expansion thing, battling Russia. So yeah, there have been wars going on nonstop for a long time, and history doesn't really give us the context of most individual humans' life experience and personal evolution when we go to look at it. So of course, whenever we go check out decades from the past, the main headlines are going to be about this war or that conflict. But it does seem like there's a pretty strong pattern in this 52 year cycle that the energy that we're visiting right now is at the very least tumultuous. But while we've got this link to difficult times in the past through this 52 cycle, I think it's a good time to think about how we could start trying to break or not trying, but succeeding to break the cycle of ancestor trauma that loops through each generation successively. And the cool thing is, synchronistically, the next episode of the show happens to be about that very thing, because we're going to be talking to an author and expert past life regression hypnotherapist named Dr. Shelley Kerr. So if you want to preview and get warmed up for that episode next week, you should go check out her book, which is called Meet Your Karma. And I love how the episodes of the show seem to just kind of flow one to the next with themes merging into one another especially that unexpected Tolkien conversation we had at the end of this podcast, which to me is perfect. Maybe it only came up because I've been so obsessed with Tolkien. If you liked that thread, then definitely check out the episode with Dr. Becca Tarnas from a few weeks back. She's actually going to come back to the show before too long as well, because we left a lot of great stuff on the table with that one. 
But decoding Tolkien was a pretty cool thing. The Blue Galactic Eagle, Ken 255. And his code spell is, I harmonize in order to create. Modeling mind, I seal the output of vision with the galactic tone of integrity. I am guided by the power of self-generation. Wow, yeah, that does sound like (laughs) Tolkien. He definitely had an output of vision and he created from... He self-generated some really harmonic stuff. So I have to say thanks to Heather for coming on once again and giving us so much interesting stuff to think about and ways to reflect upon who we are, who we came here to be, what we came here to do. You can find her stuff, of course, at shineheatherelizabeth.one. And I recommend you get on her email list at least. Check out some of the videos on her website. Very inspirational stuff. And probably she would say the best thing that you could do that would be exciting to her would be if you got inspired by the Galactic Mayan calendar in some way yourself. And it makes sense to want to get off the Roman Catholic 2000 year old version of what time is. And I know I'm personally getting pretty tired of uh, old authoritarian structures telling us what to do and what's up. And I hope the government lockdown isn't causing too much financial or emotional or physical stress for you guys out there. And if you can spare it, it would be really amazing if you chose this episode as the one that you wanted to sign up and become a plus member to, because I work really hard on this show, because I want to make sure that this is something useful to you, something that inspires you, something that gives you some kind of help or illumination on your own personal journey. And if you do sign up at patreon.com forward slash interverse for the meager $5 a month, you get the big archive of extended shows and the second hour of this show right away. And the plus extension typically does get more esoteric and deep, of course, because we're good and we're good and warmed up and harmonizing powerfully in this episode. That's definitely no exception. In Plus with Heather, we talked about staying grounded to thrive in an uncertain world. And she broke down a really useful acronym for what thrive means. She's got a video that you can see in the show notes. I put a link to that. She gave us a nice condensed version of it. We talked about empowered empathy instead of disempowering feelings, thinking that we need to fix or control others. And a big topic was leaning in towards the universe to create synchronicity between our inner and outer worlds. Learning to recognize and communicate with spirit guides. That was a fun one. I think Gandalf's my spirit guide, guys. (laughs) We talked about why imagination is more important than knowledge and is a pathway to higher understanding. I love that. I love talking about imagination. You know me. We talked about how the veil between the material and the spiritual is rapidly disappearing. It's basically gone. Using creativity and imagination to amplify your intentions, such as with an altar space. How artists and musicians are blessing the world with their quarantine time creations. And we talked about wizard tools, the wand and the staff. Creating and using those for yourself, what they can do for you. We talked about the Mayan Oracle and occult correlations with galactic signatures, directions, planets, and chakras, and assisting humanity through the heightened levels of fear on the planet right now, turning that fear into curiosity. So that's some of what we talked about in Plus. Of course, I can't tell you all of it. Got to sign up to hear it, but I hope you do. I really want everybody to hear it, but I have to create some kind of way for supporters of the show to reciprocate the time and energy that I'm putting in here in some way that can help me do more of this and do it better. But I really did like the talk about altars and creating energetic containers for our intentions. It's something that I realized whenever I started my journey was that having a type of container can actually be something that motivates you to do the thing that you're putting into that container intentionally. An example for me was that when I created an online store back in the day because I wanted to sell nifty little artistic hat pins that I was making. (laughs) Uh, I created an Etsy store on that and I actually started producing things and putting them in the store. It was like once I had that online container, it gave me a reason to come back to it, a reason to keep going. And the podcast is definitely the thing that is my main container now. 
But before those things, I never really stuck with things long term and making some sort of a space that actually the energy of what you're doing is going into that. It has some sort of gravity. It pulls you back to it, makes it feel more like you can keep going. I don't know. makes you feel interested. It's like an investment in yourself. So if you don't have some kind of container, some kind of project that you can put your energy into where it will actually stay there, it won't dissipate, you have a physical result of what you're doing, I recommend getting one. Even if it's small, start small. Even if it's not something you intend to do forever. Even if it is just as simple as an altar that makes you feel maybe more pulled towards a meditation practice. These are good ideas. Anything that can help us go inward, especially in this time, is a good idea. And the music I'm going to play us out with today is Inward by Wisdom Traders. The song's called Inward. See what I did there? Yeah, that was a pretty good segue. (laughs) Wisdom Traders is also the homie of mine who made the intro music that I play for this show too. So go follow Wisdom Traders on SoundCloud. There'll be a link at the bottom of the show notes. Sign up for Plus. If you're new to the Interverse, make sure you know that you can follow and subscribe it to it all over the place. iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube. Lots of ways to get this podcast if it's something that you want to see and hear more of. And of course, go follow Heather on Instagram or find her Facebook groups because she shares lots of fun stuff in those. And I'd love it if some of you guys let her know that you heard her on the show and liked it and thanked her for coming on. That would be great. But most of all, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to this type of information. In these uncertain times, grounding yourself in the exploration of self, I think that's always the answer regardless of what time it is. And I'll talk to you guys in about a week. Love you all very much. Namaste in Lakesh. I am another yourself. And don't forget, you've got infinite potential.